Hey guys, welcome back to Top 10 Nerds. Today we're doing something a little bit different. We've got a very special guest with us, joining us from Australia, Eric Satan from uh, Alita Battle Angel, uh, the VFX supervisor. How's it going? Very good. I'm uh, on the other side of the earth, down in New Zealand. Oh, New Zealand, my bad. Damn, that is that is quite far away. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, tell us a little bit about what you did as the VFX supervisor on the film. Well, uh, like you say, I'm in the visual effects supervisor on uh, Battle Angel and Lita, mm -hmm. and um, I have been on this film for nearly three years now. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, as the supervisor, I go on set and I work with the, uh, the director and the actors um, and actually do all the capture and the, mm -hmm. the filming itself. Um, and then once we finish that, um, which was uh, two and a half years ago now, wow. um, we come back to New Zealand and we start work on the film and um, basically um, replace Rosa Salazar. We take Rosa's mm -hmm. performance and uh, put it into our, uh, our Alita character throughout the movie. Cool. So um, the content of the film, like Alita is uh, a cyborg of sorts. Um, what, what kind of challenges uh, does that create for you in terms of creating her character um, and also creating the world around her? Um, a lot of the big challenge for this one was uh, the performance of, Alita, uh, of Rosa Salazar, right? Mm -hmm. we, we wanted to make sure uh, um, we were able to capture all of the detail of Rosa. Um, and put it into Alita. It's the first time uh, Weta Digital has done a, uh, a real humanoid character. We've done a lot of um, real um, memorable CG characters. We did Gollum and, the, mm -hmm. and King Kong and the Navi and Avatar and the Apes, um, but never really a humanoid character. So mm -hmm. um, it's our, it was a big challenge for us. Um, and making sure we're able to capture all of Rosa um, the subtleties, the nuances of her face, the, the weird way her nose moves when she smiles. Mm. Um, I mean, everyone's face does something weird, um, and you don't notice it, but if it's not there, it looks dead. Like, your face looks dead, and you fall into this weird zone of creepy. Um, so <laughs> our big challenge was making sure we were able to capture all that data. And what it meant was we had um, 60 motion capture cameras going on every shot in the mm -hmm. film. Um, we had reference cameras attached to Rose's helmet. We had um, just regular reference cameras. We had we had nearly 80 cameras going at any at any one time capturing um, Rosa just to make sure we we're able to get all all the data so we could uh, bring it back and put it onto uh, Alita in a, in a CG form. Sorry, <laughs> that's only the uh, the one character we did. We also had um, uh, around 40 other characters we did for this film. Uh, with motorballers and um, and other other uh, main characters, uh, uh, Grishk is the bad guy, mm. and uh, Zapan, and uh, any number of other characters. Wow! So um, you're using motion capture, but how much how much of the performance is actually um, like the real actor versus the CG? I know that like with her face it is, but in terms of like her body, is that also um, part of? Is it part CGI or is that how exactly does that oh. work? In Alita's case, she's full CGI, mm -hmm. so um, everything on Alita is um, full CGI, so the only time you ever see Rosa in the film is she played an extra one night um, outside the bar, yeah. um, standing there, and uh, no one will ever see it, but she is in there once. <laughs> um, now, in Ed Scribe's case, who plays the pan, mm -hmm. we actually put him in a um, performance capture suit, and then we put we put gray a gray suit around his face like this, mm -hmm. um, so that we, we actually captured his face um, as his face um, and, and put it onto a, a CG body. Mm -hmm. uh, and then some of the other characters we did the same thing. So it, it's a few it's it's different things per character. Some characters we just replaced arms and legs. Um, some we kept their face. Um, it's a it's a variety. Really trying to to match the uh, Kishiro's um, designs and, and artwork in the original manga. Mm -hmm. um, trying to capture as much of that as we could by matching characters the best we could. Mm -hmm. Actually, that brings me to my next question. How much of the manga did you incorporate in the, the design um, that in the final product of what came out? Um, as much as, honestly, as much as we possibly could. I mean, we we uh, talked to Kishiro early on. Jim Cameron was talking to Kishiro 
back in 2005 when he got he was uh, really got into the um, the 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 manga itself um, from Guillermo del Toro. Mm. Um, so they started an artwork all the way back in 2005, and then Jim decided he really wanted to go on and do Avatar and not Battle Angel because um, he didn't feel the technology was there to be able to do Battle Angel yet. Mm-hmm. Um, and then when Jim uh, basically is committed to Avatar for so much longer, Robert Rodriguez took over. Um, and then Robert worked with Kishiro also to make sure that we really got as much as we possibly could out of the script, out of the designs, um, everything we could to make sure that the heart of the, the movie still feels very much like the manga. Mm-hmm. Very, very cool. So there's um, a lot of really interesting themes in the story, um, particularly with the idea of how uh, technology and the idea of convergence um, with like the human body and whatnot, and the idea that technology can potentially evolve into this synthetic form. Um, so in terms of the film and also like just constructing the way that Alita looks, what would you say is something that the the film kind of foreshadows about what the future of technology could look like. Well, I mean, some of it's already there, right? Mm-hmm. Like the uh, some of the synthetic limbs and things. I mean, in this case, in this future, people have parts of their body replaced so that they can they can do their job better, right? The factory worker has his arms replaced with clamps and things like that, so he can do his arm. He, he can do his job in the factory better. A lot of that technology is is already happening. It's mm-hmm. not that people are replacing parts of their body so they can do their job better, but um, there's there's technology for for limb replacements for um, all these crazy things that are already starting to appear. I mean, it, it's almost um, it is a foreshadow of, of what's to come, really, right? Like the the full cyborg, maybe not anywhere uh, in the the close future, like taking your brain and putting it into a cyborg body and having that walk around the world. I'm hoping that's not in my lifetime, but... Yeah, here's <laughs> hoping. <laughs> feels a little too creepy for me, but... Mm-hmm. Um, but, I mean, all that stuff is really... It, it, it is coming along, and um, uh, it, it's uh, it, it's funny because the um, there's almost extensions that we're already doing, right? Everyone always has their phone out in front of them. That's almost an extension of people's body now. Um, and uh, it's sort of the same idea. Are there things that um, Alita can do in the film, without giving away any spoilers, um, that in terms of VFX uh, was something that you pulled a lot of inspiration from, like real world technology in order to, to create? Um, we were, we're always pulling from, from real technology and real reference whenever we can, really, right? Like, um, the, uh, she, she has some abilities that um, uh, taking in, in um, fuel and uh, using it to, to power something else, like a, uh, a sword, for example, mm-hmm. um, having a, a arc that, uh, that, that engulfs the sword and, and uh, using real technology and real ideas from things where um, we're able to take from the real world is always the best. And using reference from the real world too, right? Like mm-hmm. um, Alita's eyes, for example, um, back on uh, on Lord of the Rings, Gollum, he just had single um, polygon eyes, like one polygon per eye, and all of Gollum was 50,000 polygons. Mm-hmm. And a polygon is what basically makes the model of, of Gollum, um, or of any CG character. Mm-hmm. In Alita, we're now doing um, full simulations of her eyes and, and putting the proper muscle fibers and um, making the, the actual muscle that, that makes your iris, mm-hmm. uh, which is a whole bunch of strands, and um, simulating that through a actual effect salt to, to create the eye and doing the, the uh, open, close, open, close multiple times to like break strands and get the, the detail in your eyes. And now Alita has nine, uh, over nine million polygons wow. just for one eyeball. That's um, crazy. As compared to Gollum, who had 50,000 for all of Gollum. Wow. So using real-world re- reference now, we're able to, to really recreate uh, a lot of things that we, we could never do in the past. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really, really interesting. Just out of curiosity, did you uh, work on Lord of the Rings and in, in creating Gollum as well? or? Yeah, I was uh, the creature super 
for Lord of the Rings. So, mm. um, so Gollum was one of my first characters I did. Yeah, very, very cool. From like a, a VFX uh, perspective, uh, in terms of like the the world now. Um, how would how similar would you say, uh, or rather not similar, but how what do you think um, the world itself kind of pulls from in terms of uh, of this this kind of growing age of technology, so to speak? Not so much the the character, but uh, what we're seeing around us. How has um, I guess a better question would be how has uh, society advanced in in this world that we're being set in? Well, it's funny because this film the the way the way the story is in the manga too. Um, Zalem, which floats above, well, it floats or is hung, depending on how far you've gotten in the, in the books. Um, it's uh, it's this world above Iron City, and that's where all the technology is. Like mm-hmm. all the all the, the big technology in the world is is in Zalem, and Iron City is the world below that all technology. This all happens 300 years in the future, but the technology stopped, um, and then. There's no new technology in, in Iron City at all. I mean, there's the cyborg arms, but it's sort of 300 years behind mm-hmm. what Zalem is just floating above it. Um, so the, the technology that, that is in the manga in, in um, Iron City is really not very advanced compared to um, even um, not very far in the future from us. So when you watch the movie, you don't, you don't think crazy sci-fi Mm. Um, it, it's not one of those uh, adaptations that has like crazy sci-fi. It has cyborgs, yes, but it um, it really doesn't have the um, the over-the-top technology. It's very um, down to earth. It's mm-hmm. very um, Panama City or or Granada or something like that. I mean, that's really what we based it on. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of the color of the city is from uh, like Havana, um, very colorful city. Mm-hmm. Uh, and, and lots of it, it's very grimy and very lived in city cool so you, you'd say it kind of uh, kind of hits home a little bit uh, as in like it, it feels a little bit more you know like our world so that almost that like technology could be a little bit terrifying in a way it, it would be terrifying because it, it is like it, it's not very far off from our world now mm-hmm. I mean obviously there's cyborgs walking around and there's a couple other um creatures walking around that that don't fit on our world but uh um but it really is it's not um it's not a huge technology jump in the the world itself Mm -hmm. another little technical question for you uh in terms of how long it takes to to film just one scene with rosa what's Um, what's the process that goes into that well the the filming of the scene is very straightforward right Mm -hmm. we're we put Rosie in her performance capture suit, um, which is a really ugly black suit with um, little round dots all over it. Mm-hmm. And we capture her on set, um, and it, it really doesn't take any longer. In fact, it's probably quicker than having her go through makeup and wardrobe and all those things. Um, and she interacts with, with Hugo in the same way that, um, that uh, she would as a real actress. Um, mm-hmm. And then, the amount of time after that is where it, it really picks up. We we get all the data back um, once once Robert's made his selects and picked out the film, uh, what he wants to do, um, and then we we start to uh, introduce the animation, introduce mm-hmm. the the city extensions, things like that. Um, a typical Alita frame to render is around a hundred hours per frame. Yeah. Um, and that's 24 frames per second, mm-hmm. um, around 100 hours to render each frame of Alita. Um, some of the city renders, the big wides of the, the cities themselves, are probably closer to 400, 500 hours per frame. Wow. Um, just because the amount of data in it. So, I mean, as you can imagine, we have, um, we have uh, this movie was around four petabytes of disk space. Mm-hmm. So that's uh, 4,000 terabytes of Ooh. disk space um, yeah. just for this movie <laughs> and we have around um, around 80,000 computers um, in a room just behind me mm. that uh, that pretty much just work day and night to uh, to finish this movie that's so, crazy uh, the technology here is pretty insane mm-hmm. how many artists are uh, worked on the film uh, we had 
uh, around 900 artists on this film. Wow. So there's around 1,600 at Weta, mm -hmm. um, and we had around 900 working on this film. Wow. It's a big jump from uh, Lord of the Rings days when it was uh, 35 people here. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm a big Lord of the Rings fan, so I, I watched a lot of the uh, behind the scene documentaries. I always thought the work that you guys did was very, very cool. So it's it's really awesome being able to chat to you and hear about the process that goes into a, a bigger size production too. Well, not bigger, but I mean different different scope of work, different. right? Yeah. yeah. Um, what was I mean, your? It's, it's very different way of doing things, right? Because mm -hmm. Robert is um, Robert's used to shoot films where he is the the director the producer, the DP, the visual effects supervisor, I mean, he's used to shoot films where it's 40, 50 people. So uh, mm -hmm. this was a big jump for him too. That's very cool. Um, what would you say, so you, you worked on Avatar as well uh, with James Cameron. Yes. Yeah. So what would you say in terms of technology um, from the advances that uh, were done in Avatar, what is carried over into Alita? Um, a lot of it is very similar technology. It's mm -hmm. just advancements in the technology, right? Where on Avatar, we were able to capture um, capture the actors very similar to what we're doing with um, with Rosa, but not to the high fidelity level that we were able to with Rosa. Mm -hmm. um, we were able to capture their their facial, their body motion, um, but in in this movie we're able to capture all of the tiny little nuances and animators don't have to go in and add all the, the subtlety, um, the, the extra motion. So it, it's just newer, better technology, really. We're always rewriting new technology. We're doing um, full hair solves now for Alita. Mm -hmm. So as, as her hairs, as the um, two million hairs on her head are moving around, we're actually solving all those hairs. and. She can run her fingers through her hair, and we're doing proper water simulations now. So oh, wow. she has a great scene where she jumps into a lake, and we're actually solving all the the fluid around her properly. So when mm -hmm. she moves around, her hair moves properly, and her her clothes move properly. It's um, every movie we seem to update our technology to a uh, crazy level. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's but, so yeah, impressive. Yeah, I mean you sort of have to though, right? Because mm -hmm. the Movie going audience is so much smarter now than um, than they were back in the day. You could never get away with something um, like you could back on Gollum. I mean, mm -hmm. when we were doing Gollum, we we came out of that theater, and uh, I remember uh, people I I thought really knew what I did asked how long it took to put the the makeup on Gollum, <laughs> like how long it took to put the makeup on the character, mm -hmm. and. Uh, People aren't, don't think that anymore. I mean, they know mm -hmm. what we do. They know how things are done. And if something doesn't look right, they're going to call you out on it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It must be incredibly, incredibly tedious work, but definitely worthwhile. <laughs> It's fun, though. Mm -hmm. It's fun coming to work every day. Yeah, I'd imagine. Um, without giving away any spoilers, uh, what was, if you can say, what was your favorite uh, part of the film or a specific sequence that um, you enjoyed working on the most with your team? Um, it's funny because my favorite is not one of the big scenes. It's not one of the, uh, the scenes that anyone else would probably even remember. Mm -hmm. But it's in the very start of the film, Belita comes downstairs um, for the first time, meets Doc Ido, and has this little scene at the table where she grabs this orange from Doc Ido, and she bites through the rind on the orange, she just bites right into it. Her mm -hmm. full body, um, when, when Rosa did it, she just bit right into the orange without peeling it, without doing anything. Mm -hmm. And her whole face just went, Ugh. she made this really horrible face. And when we shot that, I thought, oh, man, we're, how are we gonna get all that crazy detail Mm -hmm. out of her face to not look really weird on Alita. And it was one of the very first scenes we got turned over so that we started working on two odd years ago. Mm -hmm. And um, when that scene got through, got through animation, we saw it rendered for the first time, and it all just sort of fell into place and you could compare Rosa to Alita and you saw the crazy wrinkles and detail in her eyes and her nose when she cringed and um, it just sort of worked. Mm -hmm. And um, and you could really see Rosa in the performance. 
that's the scene that has stuck with me the longest for some reason. Like mm-hmm. it's it's just one of those key moments that all of a sudden I thought, oh, okay, we might be able to actually do this film and make it work. So, <laughs> so that's the one that stuck with me. Yeah, I'm excited to see it. Very very excited to see it. Um, Not long, so uh, yeah. <laughs> it's gonna be fun. Yeah. Um, so, what do you want audience members to take away from the film in terms of um, some of these grander themes of technology and, and the way that you know humanity is, is moving forward with with that technology and what it could mean on a on a more like I guess ethical level. I think it's 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 really straight from the manga, right? The mm-hmm. the whole theme is the this. This girl finds herself, and it, it finds her, her inner beauty, not not her, her like what she is on the outside or what she's become. She's just found her, her inner beauty, and it, it's her, her growing as a character. Mm-hmm. Um, not that the technology is what what drives her. She just she just finds herself throughout mm-hmm. the film, and you you as you watch the film you. You see this. You see her, her growing as a character, as a person, mm-hmm. um, and it doesn't matter what she is on the outside. That she is this, this cyborg that can do these mm-hmm. crazy things. Um, she's, she's just a really, she's a character. You, hopefully, people will just fall in love with. Um, everyone that I've, uh, that's watched the film, really falls in love with Lita. So, mm-hmm. um, I really hope the world uh, gets into it and. and really just does the same, falls in love with her as she grows as a character. Thank you so, so much for chatting with us. Um, I know all of us here at the channel are really, really excited to see the film. Um, and I, I think, just based off the trailer too, like it just looks so damn cool. So it's uh, it's been a pleasure just kind of getting a little bit more insight on the, the inner workings and what goes into the, the VFX process. Excellent. I think... Uh... The movie will surprise people. Mm-hmm. So the, the trailers don't do it any justice. So um, Well, there we it, go. <laughs> there's a lot to the movie. So I think people will be excited by it. Hey, uh, thanks Top Ten Nerd for having me. Um, everyone here at Gwen Digital uh, is excited to share this film with, uh, with the world. So uh, uh, go and see it if you get a chance. Cool. Great. Thanks again, Eric. <laughs> no problem. Bye. We'll talk to you later. Have a great day. Bye.